1297, it is said that a battle took place not far from here. Not a lot is known about this battle. In fact, the only account of the battle can be found in a, a long rambling verse by a blind poet who lived almost 200 years later. A poet who was prone to, how shall we say, exaggerated embellishments. So, did this battle actually take place? And if so, where the heck is Belle of the Bray? This 1778 map will give you a good idea of street layout in the general area. You can see the cathedral, which was there in 1297, the remains of the bishop's palace or castle, which was also there, Castle Street, Rotten Row, the original course of the Dry Gate, Ladywell and the Mollendiner Burn, and the top part of the High Street, which is in fact a Bell's Bray, and here it is today. So this is roughly where that battle took place. The Bell of the Bray is the name given to a part of the High Street, the very top of the High Street in fact, uh, where, it, um, where it becomes Castle Street and that happens at the junction uh, between a Rotten Row and a little bit of uh, the original dry gate that remains. And the Bell of the Bray was between the Rotten Road dry gate, downhill towards the junction with Duke Street and George Street. That is Bell of the Bray. Um, it's a sloping bit of ground. It was um, at one time quite a steep slope, hence the word Bray, but it was made less steep, I think, in the Victorian period, presumably to make it easier for horses and carts to get up and down it. Now, William Wallace arrived in Glasgow with around 300 men on horseback. Uh, they came over the River Clyde, uh, Wooden Bridge. Uh, he immediately divided his force into two halves, each of 150 men on horseback. He led uh, one half uh, up the high street, uh, the other half uh, swept round to the east, heading towards the foot of the dry gate. And his intention was to engage with uh, a, force of a, a force of about a thousand English soldiers who were either camped in and around uh, the bishop's castle or actually in the grounds of the bishop's castle occupying at the time. I'm not 100% certain on that. But certainly there was a force of about a thousand English soldiers here. Um, to, to be honest, it, it's not an ideal situation if you've got a, a lot of guys on horse um, engaging the enemy up a slope. You know, you don't want to, be, you can't do any effective kind of horse charge up a slope. And as I say, the bell of the Bray was a steep slope, so I kind of would like to think that the battle actually took place just at the top of that slope, around about this area, not far from the bishop's uh, castle, around about where, as I say, that little bit of the dry gate and uh, the rotten row is, that's, I think, the top of that bray. And I think that's where the battle would have happened. 
At the time of the battle, Scotland was occupied by English soldiers. With the death of Alexander III, Scotland was plunged into a crisis where a choice had to be made as to who should be king. Scottish nobles made the mistake of asking King Edward I of England for advice and he took this opportunity to become involved in Scottish affairs to the extent that he decided that he would rule Scotland. Not everyone in Scotland was happy with this sudden aggressive change of ruler. Edward then sacked Berwick at that time in Scotland and killed up to 15,000 of the occupants. The town was then repopulated with English people from Northumbria. Edward then invaded and took much of Scotland. By 1296, Edward I was in complete control of Scotland. One of a number of prominent figures to oppose Edward's rule was Bishop Robert Wishart. Like a number of Scottish nobles, he played allegiance to Edward on a number of occasions, perhaps with tongue-in-cheek. For here was a bishop in armour who was instrumental in encouraging William Wallace to fight the English invaders. He did indeed ask King Edward for wood to be used in construction of part of the cathedral. This wood was then used to construct siege engines to help take Kirkintilla Castle back from English control. This was a warrior bishop. This is Ladywell Street, or what is left of Ladywell Street. Uh, it used to actually run down to Duke Street, but uh, it's only this small bit that's left, and uh, the remaining portion is uh, now occupied by a part of Tenants Well Park, uh, Well Park Brewery, which is the humming sound that you can hear in the background. Uh, and it was named Ladywell Street after a well, the Lady Well, before Glasgow had a, a decent uh, water supply. Um, there was just wells all over the shop that people would have used to, for their drinking water and such like. Um, I mean, this well didn't initially look like this. It restored in 1836 and later rebuilt. I don't know how it would originally have looked, perhaps just some kind of iron kind of pumping mechanism or maybe even at one time just a hole in the ground with water dribbling out of it. I'm not sure. Um, the well was closed down when the necropolis, the burial ground, was opened. Uh, I dare say there was a bit of contamination of the water from burials. And not far from here used to be what was called the East Brig, a bridge over the Mall and Diner Burn, um, which itself is no longer visible. It's, it's all kind of under the ground, out of sight. Used to run just beside the cathedral, all the way down to the River Clyde. Um, and in 1297, the half of William Wallace's force which was about 150 men on horseback. As I said earlier, they swept east, round this way, to this area, 
where they would have made their way over that bridge and galloped up the dry gate, where they effectively cut off the English soldiers who were at that time engaged with Wallace on the Bell of the Bray. It is possible that the battle took place further down the high street. Charging up a slope on horseback just doesn't make a great deal of sense, and it may have taken place close to the Duke Street George Street junction. It also doesn't make much sense that the English left the safe confines of the Bishop's Castle to engage Wallace. Perhaps they saw Wallace's 150 men as a pushover, and so left the castle to sort them out. But men on horseback's a scary thing. 150 of them charging at you is no small beer. I think I'd have remained in the castle. And, of course, when the other half of Wallace's force appeared from the dry gate, the English panicked and left the field with haste. Blind Harry's rambling 15th century account of the battle was in fact based on a contemporary account by Bishop William Sinclair, and there is little doubt that the bones of the account are indeed true. On the 9th of July 2016, a monument was unveiled here in the necropolis in Glasgow. Designed by Andrew Hillhouse, it is the only William Wallace memorial in the city. I'm Eddie Burns, take care and I'll see you again. <laughs>